Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. Today we're gonna go over uh, Scratch. We're gonna continue with Scratch. Uh, we're gonna go over flowcharts, pseudocodes, and codes. Uh, you will learn how to plan uh, a program, write flowchart just like this, uh, write a, a, a pseudocode, something like that, and convert a pseudocode to an actual code, just like the one we are uh, using in Scratch, the uh, block codes. So list of material, uh, the only thing you need for the flow charts and to the code is a piece of paper where you can write uh, like a notepad will do, a pencil, and you are ready to go. So what is a flow chart? To the right uh, is a flow chart that describes uh, a process of making a cup of coffee. So the fl flow chart is nothing but sequence of uh, uh, statements and orders. Uh, from uh, boiling uh, water in the kettle, uh, adding coffee to a cup, uh, adding boiled water. Notes that the, those statements uh, they are uh, they go they go in order. You know you cannot add water until you you heat it up. Okay. So that is what's uh, 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 what is a flow chart. Basically, it's it's a way of uh, describing a process of making certain function or task. So that is what's flow, flow chart. And the flow chart start with the, uh, as we will see the, these, we use these symbols like an oval here, rectangle, and then there's some, uh, in other uh, flow chart, you will see diagram and parallelogram. So let's, let's get into that. So what is the flow chart? And we just uh, basically mentioned that uh, flow chart, it's a, a, a set of uh, steps involved that to make to complete a process so it's a diagram that describes steps involved to uh, complete specific task or process uh, you can make flow chart to plan the a program part of the program or the entire pro uh, program uh, so let's see these symbols uh, that will help you create uh, a flow chart as i mentioned uh, you know there are a uh, few symbols that we use, uh, there are some that are oval, uh, oval shaped and to indicate start or an end of a program, we use this oval shape uh, geometry. Okay? Uh, we use lines like a, a direction line, this is for, for lo logical basically direction, uh, we will see it in uh, when we, when we branch in. When there is, a, for example, a condition, either we go this way or that, that way, yes or no kind of statement. And then uh, we use a parallelogram when we have to take some inputs or put some outputs. So, for example, get x means get the value of x or put y means uh, output the value of y. Okay, Like a, an LED, for example, if you want to send a voltage to, to let it up, that would be outputs, okay? Or if you have sensor to receive, for example, the uh, temperature sensor, we are getting information from, from that sensor, so that would be get x. And we use uh, rectangles, uh, basically uh, for processes and statements to be uh, executed or carried out. For example, uh, we use a rectangle here, uh, uh, incrementing x. x could be a value of time, it could be uh, a counter for something else, but anyway, so x plus 1, that's, that's, uh, that's an increment here, yeah, we're incrementing a value of x, so the, the, the new value, so if x previous value was like 9, the new value will be 9 plus 1, it will be 10, okay, and then it will be the new value of x will be set to 10 instead of 9. Uh, this is just multiple processes. Uh, the first one, uh, as we mentioned, same thing as here, we're incrementing x. Uh, the second one, we are adding a number 7 to x, and then we put, we store in this value into y, so y is becoming uh, whatever value had before, plus 7, so if x was 3 plus 7 is 10, so y is going to be 10. Okay? It's going to be holding a value of 10. And then uh, Z, uh, the, you know, these are, as I mentioned, these are just examples. Uh, next process is to have Z set to value of Y minus 9. Uh, the other type of uh, uh, shape we use or symbols 
is these, this diamond shape basically that we, we use. And we use this for condition or branching. So uh, in this example here, we're asking is X equal to five? If it's yes, then we do certain tasks. If not, then we do certain tasks. So when we have, uh, when we ask question and with this condition, uh, we have some kind of branching either this way or that way. When we have false, like a, a value no, it means uh, it doesn't, uh, we're, we're trying to equate this value and see if it's false or true. See if it's false, then no or zero here. If it's true, then yes, or it's uh, true, or then uh, number one is going to be output. Okay, uh, make flowchart from uh, your scratch. So uh, this is an example that we did, uh, except I added an if statement uh, that we did last time. Uh, so it will be, uh, and we're going to go over uh, basically uh, how you make flowcharts. We're doing this in reverse manner. So normally, uh, when you want to create program, you have an idea about the program, you plan for it, you create a flowchart, then uh, as we will see some kind of code that use more text, like we call it a pseudocode. You know, it's not a code yet, it's a pseudocode. And then we convert, for, so from flowchart, pseudocode, to finally code. Now, since we are just beginning, we want to see uh, how we can make flowchart from an actual code, okay, so we do an inverse, okay? Okay, so uh, let's say we have this code here. Uh, you get your, uh, your pencil and notepad. So what we see here is uh, when flag is clicked, that's the start of a program. So what do you have to do? Okay, you guess it right. We have to use the oval shape start here, okay? We have, we're creating a, a flow chart, which is that diagram that uses the oval shape, uh, parallelogram, uh, diamond, uh, rectangle. So that's what we're creating here. Okay, next block here. Uh, it's uh, uh, some kind of uh, a value that gets set up. Okay, so that's the, remember that's the uh, where the position for uh, the player to be close to the the penalty area. So we set him up to uh, or we set in her uh, to this uh, location here. So what we do. We do uh, basically a rectangle, and we move. So we're, we're really in a. This is the so the, uh, the so we're moving Jordan. That's the name of the player to penalty area. Okay, to be ready to to shoot the penalty. So next step here, uh, we are uh, we set a variable go to be equal to one. So this is a sample program. We just want to make sure that she's scoring all the time. So. Uh, we put this uh, variable that uh, one means it's true, so she score. Okay. Um, then we're gonna use this uh, condition. So when we use condition, we use uh, a diamond shape here. And then so the the question is really, did Jordi score? Okay, because uh, I think she did, because we have uh, we set that already the value to one. So um, or she will score. She didn't shoot the ball yet. So if that that's true means what we have to do. Remember, especially this uh, uh, this custom here, which is Jordan C, where she does like this, means she scored the goal, okay? And then we're gonna follow up with a cheers sound, okay? So yes, so all this, it's gonna go under uh, this process is here, which we're gonna change custom, we're gonna uh, custom, like there are three customs, one, the Jordan A, B, and C, we're going to wait uh, a couple seconds here, and then we're going to play the song. So all this is going to be here. And then we're going to end. The, once we do this, we're going to end the project. You know, we, you could make it more interesting, but that's uh, for this, this is the end, okay? Uh, we didn't go to the other option. So uh, basically, we didn't do, we are doing nothing uh, on the other option. So, and then we, the stop and stop program, basically that would end, uh, indicate uh, this end here. So this is how we write a flow chart, okay, from uh, scratch uh, black code or, you know, from any code, okay. So the, the, uh, this, the process is the same. So now let's write a, a pseudocode. Remember I mentioned pseudocode is some code that actually uh, we can understand 
uh, and write, but it's close enough to uh, the code that we want to write. This code here, this example, uh, it just I just charted a few things here, but it has to be like more detailed. There are more steps that I skipped just to give you an idea here. This is really just to give you an idea. So, for example, the start, start the game. Okay, so uh, you know the computer uh, is not like us. I mean, I want to play, so it's in my mind I'm going to kick the ball. But you know, for the computer, you have to click on that flag, okay, that green flag. So start the game, okay. And then this block here, I mean this uh, uh, rectangle, uh, move Jordan to penalty position. It's just basically writing text here, and then uh, set variable go to random one. Set variable. So this is type of uh, uh, when you write these steps, it's really you're writing a pseudocode. So that's what when we're talking about pseudocode. This is a sample of pseudocode. Okay, um, so uh, we have uh, this is the code. We're gonna we're gonna go over this code now and see actually how uh, we created the code, uh, this code, and how uh, we're gonna also see in the game uh, Jordan kicking the ball to to make a goal. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see the. Uh, the game uh, that we, uh, we created. So basically just the same one as uh, we did before, except now we are introducing an if statement. So we have on click, when the flag is clicked, uh, we have the player is gonna be uh, in this position here, not this custom, but this position. Then we're gonna uh, set up a, a variable. We created the variable, uh, you know, under variable block here, you see? you can go to make variable. So if I do make, I click on this and I give it a name, I, can, I call it go, you know, you can call me, it's just a, a value that basically uh, uh, you can set it to anything, you can give it any name, uh, you know, just, uh, just to let you know. So uh, I set it to, to one, to one, and then the if statement is if this variable is equal to one, then uh, basically change the custom. Then the custom of uh, Jordan is going to go, remember the custom, we were talking about the customs, it's going to go from from A to B when she's going to shoot the ball and C when she celebrates. So we go back to the code, so uh, change custom to A, then we're going to wait one second, then change it to B, we're going to wait. If we don't wait one second, it's going to be very fast you don't, and you don't see what, what's happening here, okay? And then finally custom C, which is right here, okay? And then we're gonna make the sound cheers until it's done. So this is, and then we're gonna stop the game. So this is basically uh, how this game is. Uh, for, for the ball, is the same thing. When the flag is clicked, the ball is gonna go to this position, okay? Which is two, uh, neg 94. And then we're going to do uh, an if statement also. We, we create a variable and we set it uh, to one. Then the if statement, if it's a goal, then ran this means wait one second, uh, change this ball, which is right now uh, at this position, to this position, which is going to be right here. Okay. And then we're going to bring it back here. So let's see. Okay. Um, click. Ready? Shoot. Cheer. Okay. Uh, try to make it more interesting, like maybe put a, a goalkeeper like a last time and do some uh, more interesting stuff. I just want to show you uh, uh, flowchart, pseudocodes, and this uh, introduced you to this uh, if statement. Okay, I'll see you next time and have fun.